very good morning to all of you today you know what is the topic no creative visualization okay very briefly let me tell you what it is all uh, about visualization means to be able to graphically see what is not there in front of your eyes normally we see whatever is there right in front so when i open my eyes and when i look i see something in front of me i see persons i see building i see whatever is there in the environment and that registers through my eyes into my brain now visualization is a process whereby i train my mind to see something which is not physically you know visible to my eyes in front of uh, me now extend that to creative uh, uh, visualization that means i use my creativity i use my out of box thinking to visualize something which is not the routine mundane or something you know which is very easy to visualize with because i have seen the, that so creative visualization is a process a skill a practice by which we train our mind to start looking actually seeing things which are not there i also wanted to remind you once more about my uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, authors who always uh, who has written down in his book that you will see it if you believe it see normally we say i'll believe it when i see it you show me proof then only i'll believe it but it can work the other way around uh, also that you will see it if you believe it so if you believe in something you can actually see it and that is what is creative visualization now the interesting thing is that all of us when we were children were able to do creative visualization without even putting in any effort we would just close our eyes and we could dream about anything we could even keep our eyes open haven't you had occasion where a parent is telling a child hey i'm talking to you where are you in your dream world and the child suddenly turns around and says yes ma what were you uh, saying what was the child doing the child was fantasizing the child was going into creative visualization of something which is not present in front so instead of that routine mundane mother giving lecture asking to eat do homework the child just escapes into a world of creative visualization it comes so easily and so naturally but then what happens slowly we are told you are grown up now don't do daydreaming don't waste your time doing these sort of uh, things what sort of world are you living in come back to reality and we are pulled away from it so as they say you know if you don't use it you lose it so a skill which comes to us so naturally when we were uh, children we slowly start losing it and at some point we find it difficult to do this sort of uh, you know visualization but let me tell you if we can rekindle that uh, skill or that habit of uh, creative visualization it can have so many advantages we can use it to overcome boredom and monotony and routine we can use it to overcome negative you know incidences that are happening to us and go into a world which is a very positive and a loving caring world we can use it as a means of therapy in order to bring our emotions under control and to feel better when we are going through a very bad uh, patch we can use it to connect to people i may have a friend i may have a loved one who is not uh, you know at this moment available uh, to me yes i agree with hema malini that even technology has snubbed creative visualization now everything has become one sided right so you have the screen in front of you be it your smartphone or your laptop and it shows you the visuals and you have to see only the visual which is there whereas those of you who are old enough if you recollect 
once upon a time much before tv came in we had the radio now when the radio would let's say play some dialogues of a movie we would actually sit and creatively visualize that drama going on we would only be hearing the sounds and the dialogues and based on that we would visualize the same way we can still do it today if you are an avid reader of books you start reading a, a book and you get immersed in it you actually can start visualizing what the author has written in the book you can create those images convert the text of the written word in the book to a graphic and an image uh, uh, form yes and brother reading has kind of disappeared but let us ensure that at least we keep pushing it and keep encouraging people to do it so this is why i took up this topic today because it's an excellent tool and it's not at all difficult you just have to understand uh, a few things here and uh, there and you can do wonders uh, uh, with it one of the uh, people who inspired me very very deeply and convinced me about this concept of uh, uh, creative visualization is this wonderful author called dr victor frankel Victor Frankel was uh, a psychiatrist, a Jew, who was uh, you know, doing his routine uh, work, seeing his patients and all that. When the Second World War started, Hitler came into power and Hitler was anti-Jew. Uh, so he started locking up all the Jews. Victor Frankel not only lost his family, you know, all his uh, loved ones one by one were either killed or they were uh, put into these concentration camps where they just disappeared and he himself was put in one of the worst concentration camps they used to be herded out in biting cold and they had to go out and do hard labor they were building roads they were filling ditches they were making bridges whatever it is and they would come back dead tired in the chains and thrown into one dormitory type of a place, stinking, cold, totally lonely and isolated. Things are very bad. And Victor Frankl started observing that many people are dying. Every morning when they would come to wake them up, a few would be dead. But the interesting thing that he realized was, it is not the physically weakest who are dying. Normally what would happen? Supposing there's a young, fit and fine fellow, a soldier who has been caught and put in that concentration camp. He has undergone military training and he's fit and fine and strong. He should survive. Whereas, let's say somebody like Victor Frankl, who is a doctor, who is a psychiatrist, who's never been all into fitness and this and that, middle-aged uh, man. He should have been the type of person to die. But he realized that it is not the physically weakest uh, uh, who are dying. So that is when it struck him that it is the mind that controls the body and if the mind can be strong the mind can ensure that the body will survive the most horrifying and the most horrendous circumstances in which the uh, uh, body is being subjected to in those concentration camps so how do you go about it he came out with a simple tool that is what we call as creative visualization at the end of the day when every bone is creaking, he is miserably hungry because he has hardly been given anything to eat. It is biting uh, cold with not even one blanket to cover him. In those circumstances, he would close his eyes and start visualizing what life will be when the war is over and they are released from the concentration camp and when they go home. Now, he would not just say, yes, I'll go home. I'll have my own home and family and my whatever it is. No, he would start visualizing the minutest of things. He would say, OK, I'm going to relax on a sofa. How should that sofa be designed? What should be the color of that sofa? What should be the texture of the covering on that uh, uh, sofa? Where will I put up my feet? What sort of stool do I want? How far will it be? What will be the height of the uh, stool? I will have a dog next to me. Now he would go on visualizing what that dog would look like, 
how he would wag his tail, what would be his height, what would be his color, what sort of eyes would that dog have, how would that dog come and lick his uh, uh, face. So just to give an idea about how he started going into the minutest of visualizations. And that saw him through the worst of circumstances. He survived the concentration camp. He came out. And then he did wonders after that. And that is when he wrote this book called Man's Search for Meaning. Using that, I'll just quickly quote one or two things which Viktor Frankl um, uh, said. One is, of course, the most important is they can only control your body and not your mind. That is what he kept reminding uh, um, himself all the uh, time. Signs of existential vacuum in our society is boredom. So if you find that you are getting bored, you are going through an existential vacuum, which means you are losing the goal and the purpose of your uh, life. Viktor Frankl then said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. And I think that applies immensely today when we are unable to change the situation of the corona and COVID that we are encountering. There is very little that we can do as individual human beings. But as Dr. Frankel said, we are challenged to change ourselves. Everything can be taken from a man. But one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Attitude cannot be taken away. Attitude cannot be changed. Attitude cannot be crushed. And that is what we are going to be doing uh, today. Okay. Now, uh, I will start you off with a little bit of what we call as this, uh, you know, a guided uh, uh, imagery. It has been used a lot of times. Good uh, sports psychologists use it when they try when they visualize uh, success. They tell the uh, person, let's say that he's going to go on this 100 meter, 400 meter sprint. They tell him to close the eyes and visualize the uh, end post that he is running fast and he is reaching that uh, uh, point and he is being able to move on to that uh, uh, winning uh, post and. It has been proven that it does uh, um, help. I also wanted to you know, share with uh, uh, you um, about these people, you know, who wrote this very famous series of books called Chicken Soup for the Soul. When they started writing uh, uh, this, they were not successful initially. No publisher was interested. It was something very unusual. No one, one page, two, two page, supposedly touching stories, but what really is it achieving? Why will people buy, pay money and buy these books and read it? So they were not making much headway. You, I'll share with you what they said about how they went through that very distressing time of facing failures and rejections. They said when we were writing the very first chicken soup for the soul, we took a copy of the New York Times bestsellers list. New York Times newspaper brings out weekly a bestseller list that these are the books which are selling maximum so many thousands and lakhs of uh, um, copies. We scanned it into our computer and using the same font as the newspaper, we typed chicken soup for the soul in number one position. Okay. They use technology to their uh, um, advantage. Paperback advice, how to and miscellaneous category. We printed several copies and hung them up around the office. So in the office, you would see the so-called bestseller uh, list of uh, New York Times with chicken soup for the sale on uh, top. They were not cheating anybody. They, they were, this is an internal thing which they were doing just to motivate um, themselves. Okay. Two years later, our book was the number one book in that category and stayed there for over a year. This is a pretty solid example of successful visualization techniques. I was just giving you this background to help you to understand the significance of it and to help you to become a little more positive and motivated to do this. 
So I will be in a minute or so starting you off on uh, uh, the process. It will take maybe about 10 to 15 minutes uh, maximum. But before we start that, I'm going to take a break for a minute. And in that one minute, I'd like you to do three things. Okay, The first and most important is either tell your family members or whoever are there at home not to disturb you for the next 15 minutes. Because if somebody walks in, somebody says something to you, somebody peeps over your shoulder, your concentration may get disturbed. Or if you feel like you can close the door and tell them, don't come and bang on the door. I need some privacy for the next few minutes. Either way, try and create a situation where you are uh, you know, ensured that there is no uh, disturbance. The second thing that I would like you to do is to recall one place where you had gone for a vacation, whether it was two years back or five years back or 10 years back is not important, but a place where you had gone to, which you thoroughly enjoyed, whose memories are still fresh in your uh, mind. And given an opportunity, you would like to go back there again once more. So you take this one minute break that I'm giving you to recall one such place. And once you have it clearly in your mind and can recall a lot about that vacation which you had, I'm going to take you through the process of uh, uh, you know, how to go back there. The third thing that I would like you to uh, do is to list out one, two, three people maximum who are you know, the type of people whom you would like to have with you when you go for this vacation. So let's create an imaginary situation that today the entire COVID has been wiped out. Government has said, enjoy. Come out, do whatever you want. No social distancing required, no vaccination required, no mask required, no travel restrictions. So you're going to immediately plan to go to that place, right? Now, who are the people? It could be one person. It could be two or three people. I leave it to you. But I would like you to pick and choose those one, two or three people. So I repeat again, make sure that nobody is going to disturb you for the next 10, 15 minutes. Secondly, recall and keep ready in your mind one uh, vacation resort which you had gone to and which you can recall very vividly. And thirdly, one or two or three people whom you are who would you would like to take with you if you are going for this vacation. So do all this in the next one minute and then I will be starting you off on the process. Ready to start off? Okay. What I would like you to do is to sit down in a very comfortable situation. You decide what is comfortable uh, to you. Okay. Make sure that you have maybe a good backrest, that your feet are firmly on the ground. They normally say it's better not to cross your uh, feet, you know, to keep them uh, uh, apart. 
hands you can decide some people like to sit this way but what i recommend again is leaving your hands uh, sort of free somewhere maybe in uh, on your uh, uh, thighs or on a table or wherever it is so just shuffle around a little bit and see which is the most comfortable situation that you'd like to be in for the next few minutes right once you have done that i would like you to close your eyes and become aware first of your surroundings what you were seeing just before you closed your eyes in the room whatever was visible at that point of uh, time now you try to visualize it without opening your uh, eyes because you were just seeing it a few seconds back right it should not be very difficult okay now that you have visualized things around i would like you to look up with your eyes closed let your mind's eye look towards the ceiling and visualize an opening in the ceiling the ceiling has made a hole on top and the beauty of it is you have now become weightless you can float you can come out of your chair and start rising slowly visualize yourself rising above your chair as you start going higher look down and see you will see the same room you will see the same chair and table but you are no longer there on the chair you have started rising up and up and up very conveniently the roof has opened out and there is the huge sky above you now you are floating above you have gone beyond your apartment or your house into the open sky look around and see the beauty of the blue sky such a lovely weather all around maybe some clouds maybe some trees far away maybe some birds flying around look around and see when you look down from above you should be able to see your house or your apartment you should be able to see the surrounding areas you should be able to see the road the entire locality go higher keep going higher the things down below start becoming smaller and smaller and smaller now look around and once again enjoy the beauty of the open skies it could be clouds it could be stars or moon it could be the sun it could be just about anything look at some of the cloud formations sometimes they form such fascinating shapes no see if you can visualize some shapes of the clouds now turn in the direction of the resort where you are going to go and you don't need an aeroplane or a car or a train or a bus you just zoom at full speed float fly fly float till you have reached that place first get a bird's eye view of that place maybe it's a hill station maybe it's a beach maybe it's a forest reserve get a bird's eye view and slowly start coming down 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 to the place where you had stayed last time maybe you had a room or a cottage or dormitory or wherever you stayed go down go up to that place see your feet gently landing on the ground now you have reached the ground 
turn and invite your loved ones to come and join you with your eyes closed, with your mouth closed, call out to them. Tell them, hey, I am here waiting for you. Come and join me. See them coming. It could be, as I said, one person, two people, three people, whatever it is. They've come. Give a nice warm hug. Welcome them. Hold their hands and take them inside and show them around. I'm going to get silent for a minute or two and I want you to have a complete tour of that resort. While you keep explaining to your loved ones about what are the things over there, whether you show them the dining room or the swimming pool or the garden or whatever you want to show them. Take them on a tour for the next one or two minutes while I remain silent. Hi. Sorry to intrude on your guided tour. If you have not completed it, tell them. Hang on. Little later, I'll take you to the rest of the place. But so far, you have enjoyed it, right? You have gone to a favorite holiday resort. You have actually been able to experience. And you should experience with all your senses. What is the temperature there? Oh, it's getting cold. I think I need to put on a sweater. Oh, no, it's quite warm. I'm at that beach uh, place. It's very warm. So I'm going to you know, throw away this heavy shirt and I'm going to wear a nice light t-shirt and then I'm going to move around. Visualize the people who are there, your loved ones, what dress they are wearing, how they are looking around, how they are smiling at uh, you. What are they talking to you? Go into as much detail as possible. Once you have done that, you tell them, we are coming back here very soon. Right now, let us go back for the time being and we will come back over here. So give them again a nice warm hug. Say bye bye to them and start floating up in the air. Slowly start going higher and higher. Look down at that holiday place. Get a bird's eye view again and say, hey, there seems to be something interesting in that corner. Maybe I should go on that road which I had not gone and just take a walk next morning in that road and see where it leads to. Maybe certain views of some valleys or something which you would like to keep in your memory and come back to them later. And then you are there again floating high up in the sky and from there you start turn towards your home. It just takes a few seconds for you to float and come back. Now you can see your home below. From far up you can see your home or your apartment or wherever you had left from. Gently float back. 
the opening in the roof is still there waiting for you. Get through that opening, come down. Once you are down, the roof will close by itself. Come back and sit in the chair which you had left and floated and gone off. And gently open your eyes. Now this, in a nutshell, is a very simplest, briefest, and elementary form of creative visualization. When I do it together, and particularly we do it every time when we have a manthan camp, we sit down in the open air auditorium and we do this. And I ask for feedback, and I get such amazing feedback from people about how they visualized what, and whom they met, and how they connected back to somebody. It gives such a pleasing experience to many of us. But if in case you have not been able to enjoy it, you said, yeah, I thought of it, but somewhere I was getting stuck. I couldn't really visualize if that happened to you. Don't worry. Because you have become too much of a pragmatic and practical person in life. Somewhere you need to shake it off. And the only way to shake it off is to practice. What I did did not even take 15 minutes. Whenever you have time, whenever you have the inclination, do it. Maybe read up about some holiday resort. Read all the details about it and then do this visualization. So that gets converted into the visual form. Maybe talk to your family members and have a detailed chat with them that once the uh, restrictions are lifted, you know, we'd like to go to such and such place. Have a detailed discussion with them and then go and lock yourself in the room and do this creative visualization. It works wonders. There are such fantastic advantages of this, which I will recount to you in a minute after we take a little bit of a break. I would like Sima to come in and give you a little input about what's happening in Banjara. And then I will continue. And my chat box is open. I've received a lot of appreciating things. Wow, mesmerizing, awesome, amazing experience, beautiful feeling. I wish it was longer. All these are there. And it will improve. It will continue to improve. But after the break, I'd like to see what are your questions or your doubts or your comments so that we can go a little more deeper into this concept of creative visualization. Over to Seema. Yes, Ali, I was in fact uh, remembering the time, uh, you know, in February, in fact, as recent as February, where we were all there and uh, we did, you know, you took us through this. And every time we go there in uh, Manthan, uh, it's so peaceful, so serene, green. And, uh, you know, you take us through this, it is truly mesmerizing. It's it's an amazing, uh, you know, journey, uh, you know, and I don't know, it, it's, it, it, it has to be experienced. So we would love uh, for all of you, in fact, to take part, come uh, for, uh, you know, uh, those kind of camps. And I tell you, it's an experience. It's an experience worth uh, you know, going through. So that's what we do. And uh, right now with the, you know, many people uh, feeling a little low, emotionally down, not being able to go out, uh, there is a lot happening uh, in our mind. Uh, so if you feel like having a chat with us, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, feel free to call us. Uh, our number is given here anytime, uh, you know, for a chat, for a counseling session for yourself or your uh, family member or anybody you think just needs to went out, uh, discuss certain things, uh, you know, please uh, contact us. Uh, you know, we'll give you our uh, Banjara mobile numbers also. And uh, Jenny, uh, my colleagues Jenny and uh, Anis uh, will connect you to uh, a counselor whom you can have your session with. And uh, yes, it can be very, very relaxing. 
right so uh, we are all here for you we are all uh, trained counselors so please uh, uh, you know feel absolutely free to contact us right i also wanted to tell you about uh, our diploma in counseling skills program uh, for this year this will be the 23rd year uh, right and uh, it is a, a one year part time program uh, to of course work on self as well as to reach out to others so the admissions are going on uh, you know it's very heartwarming to see that uh, you know we are uh, having people people have made up their mind last one year they've been thinking of doing this program and uh, you know uh, they are taking admissions and we are uh, doing a lot of stuff to engage them from now itself we are not even waiting uh, for the lockdown to lift or end of the month and all of that so for example yesterday we had a webinar a paid webinar uh, for uh, you know uh, the elder elderly uh life begins at uh, 60 and we invited them all there so any activity any program any webinar uh, whatever we are doing we are involving our dcs uh, students who are uh, you know enrolled with us we've already created a whatsapp group an official group and we are keeping them uh, you know uh, updated about all the happenings here and uh, in the days to come we are planning a lot of stuff uh, for our uh, dcs students uh, who are uh, going to be you know um, who going to be taking up this program this year so uh, please uh, you know you're most welcome to know more about the program uh, just call us and we'll tell you about it and we will take you into this wonderful journey of understanding human behavior uh, our coordinator soon will be uh, you know having these small sessions with the uh, uh, you know the dcs students some introspection some uh, brainstorming so Uh, you know if you want to begin your journey of understanding uh, human uh, behavior better uh, this is the program which will take you into that so with that i would like to hand you back to ali thanks a lot seema i have some very interesting questions anu says can we visualize for others like kids take a set of one or two or three children and tell them to do what i told you no close your eyes start visualizing thinking be ready for the fact that being children they will giggle they will open their eyes in between they would like to say something don't take it very seriously it need not be as calm and serene and composed as the one which we did as adults let them laugh and giggle let them interrupt let them say something again tell them okay come on close your eyes and we are going to start off with the uh, the thing again that way you can involve children in many many ways in doing these uh, uh, things okay vinita says wish i could continue to be there you know what you have done vinita you have signed up for that they have these uh, you know uh, holiday schemes that you pay once and for the rest of your life every year you can uh, you get 3 days free in that resort now what you have done is that you have signed up for 365 days free every year so whenever you want you can go back you already have your registration in that place for the next 365 days for the next as many number of years as you um, want sunita has said something very nice that when i come to bangalore i will definitely join you we look forward to people I really appreciate those who come from far off distances and join us and become part of the Banjara um, uh, family. Nida says my son is so upset that he can't even go to the park. Kids are most affected in this lockdown. Yes, definitely, Nida. There's no doubt about uh, um, it. But as I said, we have to create substitutes for uh, um, them. You know something I had mentioned this long back in the peak of uh, uh, summer. when you know, even the regular trees were drying up and you know it looked a little barren one day i was entering into the office we have this metal gate small uh, gate as i was opening the gate i saw that at a junction you know you have this uh, uh, vertical member of the uh, gate and this horizontal member and they are welded together there was apparently a gap in that welding and there was a tiny shoot with two three leaves coming out of it it is not even connected to the ground it is a metal piece only thing is it was hollow so maybe some mud went in and i don't know what and then the water must have seeped in and i don't know how a seed got in 
and here was a little plant coming out of that uh, thing it was unbelievable now these are the things that you need to help children with so when your son is upset that i can't even go to the park tell him nature comes to us if we do not go to the uh, uh, nature let him look around and see where there is nature let him create nature get him one or two pots to put in the balcony and help him to understand how plants grow how you need to have delayed gratification how you have to wait for the uh, weather to uh, change someone is asking how many times in a day can we uh, do this you won't get addicted don't worry so many will do it as many times as you want to maybe different uh, um, holiday resorts uh, every time or keep going back to the same one your own mind will tell you that okay it's enough uh, now i've enjoyed myself now oh, let me get back to some other uh, um, activity uh hema malle says that when they ask teens to visualize they think of restaurants and eating and virtual games they play okay virtual games of course anything to do with the screen we have to keep them out of it but no harm why not start with a restaurant don't argue don't fight it out tell them okay come on now you start telling me and describing to me one of the most favorite restaurants so tell me how it looks when you enter over there tell me where you are going to park the vehicle tell me how you are going to enter tell me count and tell me how many tables are uh, uh, there tell me the ambience tell me the lighting that is there tell me the color scheme tell me the type of uniforms that the waiters uh, uh, people stewards uh, uh, wear tell me the type of crockery and cutlery that is there so what you have done is and then of course going on to the food and which is the best items and how you enjoy them so once you encourage the uh, teen or the youngster to visualize on things which he or she likes then next you say hey you i know i had gone to such and such resort in certain such place and they had amazing food which was different from what we get in our city and then talk about that resort or that place so slowly what are you uh, doing you are weaning them and taking them into this uh, thing ah sharmin has asked a very interesting question what is the difference between this and escapism in fact that is what prevents us i told you no as we grow up people tell us don't be stupid you are not a child how can you sit and visualize all these things come down to reality we have work to do what are you escaping this from let me tell you sharmin and everybody else we can and we should look for escapism don't we escape from the real world when we go to sleep in the night don't we escape from work when we take a tea break don't we escape from our routine responsibilities when we put on the tv or watch a movie it is necessary a human mind needs breaks and escapes but this is a little different and a little uh, more uh, um, uh, unique satyan is asking was this a way of life of the ancient sages of visualizing and therefore maintaining such things absolutely right uh, satyan they went you know far ahead of us like how victor frankel survived the concentration camps there are so many sages and wise people gurus and baba you know whatever uh, seers who have gone far ahead of us when they do their visualization their visualization even goes out of this world into something which is cosmic and which leads you to the deeper meaning of life and all i am not into spirituality so i cannot tell you that you can talk to them and find out how and what to what extent they do it but what i am suggesting is at a very basic uh, level you start with this and then eventually if you are a person looking for a higher self or for spirituality this will act as a foundation for you to uh, go about that people who do meditation people who do what uh, uh, you know we uh, normally re uh, refer uh, uh, to as mindfulness these are all interconnected to each other what i am introducing to you is at a very basic human level like i told you you can even take a kid with you and you know laugh and joke and both of you together can do this uh, visualization 
Ah. Every night once I go to bed, I let my thoughts wander to the things I want to do and imagine myself as having them. Is this escaping reality? Not at all, Pushpa. It's a very wonderful way of relaxing, calming down instead of people who resort to some drinks or some other artificial means to escape from reality. He, here you are doing it in the most natural way. So start imagining things that I want to uh, do. So nowadays it is caught up, so I am not able to do this. It could be something as simple as I want to go to a mall and spend two, three hours there doing window shopping. I'm not allowed to do that, but I can do it in my mind. I can do creative visualization of that so and so mall, which I've been to a number of uh, times. And that also gives me that motivation and that positive feeling that one fine day I'm going to go back. This cannot last in, uh, indefinitely. One fine day I will be able to go back. Today I'm just using that as a visualization. I agree with Satyan that we should take smaller steps which can lead to the higher uh, purpose. So we start off with these baby steps as we can uh, call it. For those of us who have not done it, people, I'm sure there are many of you who are at a much higher level than me and who are doing things as I told you at a meditation level or whatever else that you are uh, doing. Congratulations to you. You can be a good role model to the others. Ah, I know there's an interesting question for a person who is full of ego. How can we train his or her brain? Ego is in the one verge of non-communication to near and dear ones. I keep reminding that you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make him uh, drink. Sometimes even horses oblige, but human beings with ego don't oblige you. The only thing, if that person is important to you, that person is a permanent member of uh, your, you know, your life or your family or whatever it is. What I would uh, envisage or what I would request is keep doing it on and off once in a while without nagging, without putting pressure, but keep coming back to the topic and do it when the person himself or herself comes out with a point. When the person says, again, they've extended this lockout to a stupid fellow, you know, I don't know what to do. I wanted to go out. That is when you bring in and say, can we try this out and see? We can't change the rules that uh, the authorities have uh, uh, put on us, but we can do this. This is the reason why last time I was telling you, you said, no, it is too bad. It is not good. I said, okay, you. but can we now try it now that the lockdown has been extended in any way we are locked in? Can we try it out this week and see how these things uh, uh, should be? Uh, Dimi says, we, uh, would we not get depressed that we are unable to go there in reality after the visualization like missing? No, Nime, it doesn't happen that way because it's like watching the trailer to a movie. When you watch a trailer, you never get depressed. Oh, I didn't get to see the movie. It motivates you to make arrangements to when and how you are going to see the movie, isn't it? Anything of that uh, uh, sort. So this is a precursor. This is like that uh, advertising banner for the main uh, uh, thing. So even when, uh, let's say, uh, somebody puts on a commercial, you are watching some uh, program and a holiday resort puts on a commercial and shows you. We bought this wonderful uh, uh, place and you can, uh, you know, come and visit us. And here we are showing you a bird's eye view or what other facilities that we have. Doesn't it attract you to that uh, uh, place? And one important uh, um, thing is to Keep a positive mindset, like what Shailaja is asking, does this visualization help people to get closer to their goals and aspirations? Yes, it does. It does it in a very indirect manner that you start looking beyond the routine and the mundane and you start looking, knowing that, yes, there is a possibility that these sort of uh, uh, things are happening. Saroja says, I'm experiencing daily after your time. Yes, that's what I said. Spirituality, meditation, mindfulness, prayer, satsangs. These are all part of the same thing, maybe even at a higher level than what I am talking uh, about. So if you have that habit of saying your prayers and during the prayers, doing some sort of visualization, it could even be an abstract visualization of looking at life beyond whatever is the routine or the mundane and thinking of some bliss 
you know, some sort of nirvana. Wonderful if you come to that level. I really appreciate and admire uh, you uh, for it. Suman says, can also spend quality time with your loved ones if you and far from them during this. Yes, that's another way, you know, you can visualize uh, that. And later on, when you maybe call them up or something, you can discuss with them and say, you know what I did this uh, uh, morning. I visualized that I went to that holiday resort in Uti, which we had all gone together earlier. And I invited you when you came and joined me and we spent a few very exclusive moments over uh, there. It felt almost as though I got you back, even though you are so many miles away from uh, uh, me. This visualization can also be translated to art, bringing out a parallel potential. Yes, definitely. Anything to do which is, uh, you know, um, uh, visualization. Ranjilata says, along with visualization, we should also work towards that, I guess. Just visualizing may not uh, um, uh, be, um, you know, yes, that is entirely up to you. What I am saying is, I have taken you to that very simple, basic first step. From there onwards, how you go about it, like I was answering Satyan that, you know, if you're a spiritually inclined person, if you have access to a guru or somebody who's really a, a seer and a person who can take you at higher levels, why not? Take advantage and do that. But not all of us are inclined that way or not all of us have those opportunities. So in that case, even this is enough. Even if you cannot go beyond this, I assure you that this will give you some level of satisfaction. It will definitely improve your uh, uh, quality of uh, uh, life. Shailaja says, in fact, visualizing what your tomorrow is going to be helps people to stick to a plan and achieve a lot more in a uh, day. That's what I said. No, that the moment you say that this is not going to last forever, this too shall pass. Ache din ayenge at a personal level, at a family level, at a community level, and at a national and global uh, level. It is our attitude and the way we look at uh, things. Chandrima says, what about lockdown achievement? I got a pet, started learning Tagore's online music and completed IPCG. Fantastic, Chandrima. You have done wonders. Even a pet can help you to really enhance your quality of uh, uh, life. Asha is asking, will it help bring down long-term anxiety? I cannot give that assurance, uh, um, Asha, it may or may not uh, um, happen, because it is a fact that this has a therapeutic uh, value, definitely. But by itself, it may not be able to bring down anxiety. If there is a long-term anxiety, then I think we need to work on it on a more detailed uh, um, level. I have written a small booklet on Coping with anxiety, you can ask uh, Banjara office. They'll send you a copy if you want. In that, I've given you some exercises and some pointers as to how you can overcome uh, um, anxiety in case it has been there for a long time. Right now, acknowledge the fact that we are, I think, most of us or many of us are going through anxiety because of, number one, the uncertainty, and number two, the fact that there have been so many deaths you know, every now and then we suddenly hear of a very healthy person who got COVID and the person passed away and that really shakes us up very badly. We don't even realize it. If it is somebody very close to us, then definitely it hits you very badly. But even if it is somebody not very close, somewhere the mortality and the morbidity of the thing that, oh, my friend's friend or my cousin's uh, neighbor or my so-and-so, passed away with uh, COVID, whereas there was no reason for that person to die at such and such uh, age. These are the things which can affect you. And visualization is going to at least to some extent relieve it. Ranjita says, I have a vision board with all the images and goals posted on my bedroom. Fantastic, Ranjita. Reading room and even bathroom. I keep seeing it wherever I go. It works. This is the power of visualization. Reading also helps. Reading, there is no doubt about it. I don't know how often I keep reminding people that please do not give up the habit of reading. Be good role models to the younger generation. Show them the advantages of uh, reading. And I also mentioned in the beginning, I'm repeating again, 
reading can also be a first step towards visualization. You can get one or two family members or somebody together and read out a passage and tell them to visualize. How would it be in a graphic form? If you have a budding artist in the uh, family, tell that person to draw a sketch of what uh, was written in the uh, storybook or whatever book you were uh, uh, reading. Small, small things like this, but they go a lot uh, uh, weight. Shaista said, this is something I do while doing meditation after affirmation, then visualization. It does bring down anxiety. Definitely. Shaista, that's exactly what I'm uh, saying. That if you're already into med meditation and if you are already doing affirmations, affirmations also, I'm not touching upon it because it's a topic by uh, itself, but even positive affirmations go a lot long way. So a combination of meditation, affirmation and visualization can be a wonderful way to bring down the uh, anxiety. And as Anuradha says, it's a powerful tool to achieve fulfillment also. So sometimes, you know, when I'm feeling very frustrated, nothing is moving, things are getting stuck, I'm not making progress. I don't know if things will get worse from uh, time to time. Whenever those type of doubts or questions start coming in your uh, mind, no, this is a very nice, simple technique. And like I said, how long did it take? 10 or 15 minutes on an average. Of course, you can extend it to whatever time period you want. There's nothing stopping you. But even within your routine, even if you say I'm very busy, I've got 10 other commitments uh, to uh, take care of, it still doesn't uh, matter. You can take out those few minutes to do this little thing the same way as you take a break and you watch some quick video or something. But remember, whenever you are watching something on the screen, be it a movie, be it a video, be it anything of that sort, you are surrendering yourself to one-way communication. Whatever is coming to you through the screen is being imposed upon you and you do not have a choice left. So when that person is on the screen, you have to see his or her face. When that person is talking, you are forced to listen to what that person is uh, saying. Now, this is what I want to caution you from. That instead of surrendering the ability of your mind to do creative thinking, to be able to visualize, to be able to look forward, to be able to explore uncharted territories. Do not become what they call a couch potato. They used to say people who used to be hanging around on the couch all the time watching TV. Now you don't even need to go and sit on the couch for the TV. You just pull out your uh, smartphone, put on something. You can lie down, you can keep walking, you can keep standing, sitting and these things uh, uh, come. Uh, Lila rightly says visualization of good things increases the production of happy hormones. These are all the internal things. I'm not going into the technicalities or the clinical definitions of these things. But the fact remains that wonders can happen. And it is, as I said, the bottom line which I would like to end with is to tell you that this is one way by which you are telling yourself and you are telling the whole world and the whole universe around you that I am in control of my life. I am not a couch potato who will just sit and watch some programs or serials or get influenced by others. I am not going to allow the social media to dictate what my life should be and how I should govern my uh, um, uh, life. Yes, so no, listening to podcasts and reading does promote better visualization. I mentioned reading. You can also use podcasts. You can do any of those things where the mind remains free for you to allow the mind to explore and go into whatever you uh, want to. And the more you keep making it into a habit, the easier it becomes. Anything that you have got used to and you've been doing on a continuous basis starts becoming so easy no? So this is also one of the tools which once you start doing it, when I took that quick uh, uh, break, you saw that cat looking at the uh, uh, mirror. That is what each one of us can uh, uh, do. Yes, Emma, we can even in classrooms, we can implement this. So one fine day when the classrooms open and the children are there, and if you have already practiced this, 
you can teach it to your students to your children to your family members anybody and everywhere you can do it so start off take advantage of uh, these little little things which come free of cost in life and which you are perfectly capable of doing and slowly spread the message don't impose it don't force it down somebody but when they see that you are happy you are visualizing you are gaining something out of it automatically they should also feel that let me also get down to it this way you can be a wonderful role model have a wonderful saturday and a weekend and we'll see you again next saturday and we shall continue lockdown or no lockdown thank you and bye bye